And having four or more years of college reduces the level of poverty among women by 68%. Among women with a high school diploma, about 12% live in poverty. And for women with four more years of college here in Ohio, about 4% live in poverty. Um, so clearly some issues related to the economy that also take in education that um, have to be considered when we look at ways to recover from this current economic crisis. Thank you. Thank you so much, Julie. Our next speaker will be Paulo DiMario, who is Executive Vice Chancellor for the Ohio Board of Regents. He has been in his position since September of 2008, and in that position he coordinates the agency's efforts to implement the strategic plan for higher education. Um, he's involved in continuing policy and program development directed towards Ohio goals for the University System of Ohio to graduate more people, keep them in Ohio after graduation, and attract more talent to Ohio. Hello. Thank you. Uh, it's a great uh, privilege for me to be with you all today on behalf of uh, Chancellor Fingerhut, the Board of Regents, and the University System of Ohio. And uh, it's really a nice segue from Julie's comments into my comments because, as was indicated, you know, the work that we do at the Board of Regents is really anchored in the strategic plan, which I hope many of you have had occasion to read uh, or, or understand. Um, and as was stated in my introduction, the, the, the anchor goal Behind that strategic plan is to do exactly what Julie said Ohio is so uh, deficient about, and that's improve educational attainment across the board. Because not only is it unsatisfactory uh, in the case of women's educational attainment, but also uh, throughout the economy. And I think Chancellor Fingerhut, in the various conversations that he had across the state leading up to the development of the strategic plan, uh, came away strongly with the notion that Ohio must commit to improving educational attainment across the board if it really wants to compete in the 21st century economy. And furthermore, he said, okay, how are we going to do that? And he really laid out these three kind of what I call these umbrella strategies. One is we need to graduate more students, and there's a whole host of things that have to happen in order for that to happen. We have to keep them in Ohio. Uh, and then we have to create a climate in Ohio that makes it attractive for other people outside of Ohio to come to Ohio. And so it's really those three umbrella strategies that drive the work of the, uh, of the university system of Ohio. And, and kind of embedded throughout the strategic plan is this notion that how best can Ohio's university system distinguish itself? It's not going to be known as, you know, the low-cost leader in the country, uh, and it may not be known as the, you know, as, as the, you know, Harvard equivalent. But what we can distinguish ourselves is by being a driver of the state's economic advancement and economic development. And so he has really pushed that message, uh, not only in the work he does when he's out on the road uh, talking to groups and uh, working with our different university partners, uh, but also in, in the, our legislative agenda, uh, his, uh, his policy outreach to, uh, to uh, um, policymakers, his work with the governor's office, and so forth and so on. Um, and, and this is a, a perfect uh, confluence of those issues to talk about uh, the green economy, because clearly the university system will play and must play a role in helping to drive the emergence of the green economy on the one hand, but also then preparing the workforce to be equipped to work in that green economy on the other hand. So what's happening? And many of you know the stories, because as you look across the, the landscape of higher education in the state of Ohio, you can find places uh, that have driven the green economy in quite substantial ways. Uh, the one that comes to mind most frequently and is often the most cited one is all the work in photovoltaics that goes on as, a, as an outgrowth of the University of Toledo uh, and, and the various businesses that have grown up around that. But we also see huge activity on any number of fronts, whether it's wind power, whether it's smart grid activity, whether it's uh, environmental remediation, a whole host of green areas have been places where Ohio's institutions have research expertise that have developed into spin-off uh, companies and economic activity in the communities they serve and even beyond the boundaries of the communities they serve. So we are really continuing to push our institutions uh, from a research and economic development perspective uh, to fo focus on those areas and, and do their work with a view towards what will the impact be in a very real way on the economy of the state of Ohio. At the same time, we take a great deal of pride in our role from a workforce development perspective. And in fact, just recently we kicked off the Ohio Green Pathways Project, which is our effort to, 
focus specifically on the green economy and do a couple of things. One is to, to begin to sort of inventory across the board all the various programs that are offered at U University System of Ohio institutions uh, that feed the green economy. And this is, of course, a challenging undertaking because, uh, as many of you know who work in this area, the definition of what a green job is constantly gets a lot of debate. Uh, and while we may easily identify the, you know, photovoltaic manufacturing technician, uh, also there's the, uh, you know, the uh, residential electrician who might be installing a, a, a photo array on a building, uh, but that's only one component of their job. And so it has a green tinge to it, uh, but is it really fully a green job? And from our perspective, what we want to do is make sure we're ready to train the entire range of green skill sets whether it's the lawyer who needs to know something about environmental law in order to uh, support some bond issue for energy efficiency bonds, or whether it's uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the hospital attendant who, who really wants to be tuned into a whole host of sustainability uh, kinds of things that might support uh, lowering the costs in a, in a healthcare facility. And so throughout the University System of Ohio, uh, you will find, and, and, and this is something that we constantly work with our institutions to do as well, uh, is institutions working closely with the business communities in their areas to understand what the demand-driven occupations are going to be. What are the curriculums that are required to support those demand-driven occupations? What are the skill sets that need to be developed in students? And how do we produce that pipeline of workers and skill sets that will support the growth of this economy? And so, um, the, you know, from a, from a long story short perspective, uh, we at the university system see ourselves supporting both the increase on the business side through the research and economic development and technology transfer side of the equation and support the pipeline side from the workforce development piece. And I think very much together, uh, along with all the partners uh, that we work with, everybody from uh, private higher education institutions, uh, chambers of commerce, other uh, interested um, uh, uh, nonprofit organizations on the workforce agenda, uh, that we will continue to work to drive this economy uh, to grow and grow and grow. Because one of the fascinating things in my work, uh, and, and when we kicked off the Ohio Green Pathways project, it was around the same time that the Department of Labor came out with their grant announcements uh, of a variety of different grants uh, built around green job training. Uh, one of the things I took on personally was to better understand exactly what all was happening across the system. So we convened a variety of video conferences. Uh, we did some inventorying. And to me, with, without exception, there was almost not a day that went by that I didn't learn about something new, not only going on within our system, but across the state, different organizations uh, driving the agenda of understanding what's happening in the green economy, helping support business development in the green economy, helping uh, create and deploy new technologies in the green economy, and, and just so much uh, dedicated activity. And I think one of the commitments we make, uh, and which is why I was so excited to be asked to, to come to this conference, is that we want to be partners in that work. We want to be facilitators. We want to be uh, supporters. Uh, and, and wherever there are discussions happening about the green economy and green jobs, uh, the University of System of Ohio wants to be there to be a partner. Uh, so with that, I'm uh, concluding my remarks, and I look forward to the conversation. And just so Sue knows that we'll stay on track, um, we have one more panelist, and then I really don't need to say much because we m mostly need to hear from you all. So we'll, we'll get back on track with the schedule. We'll, I think we'll only be running about five minutes late. Um, so our, our uh, next panelist is Gen Genevieve Tuchow. Right. Oh, good, I got it right. Who is the Vice President of Human Resources for American Electric Power. Um, Jen... The focus of her responsibilities at AEP is to strategically align human resource functions and processes in support of AEP's business strategy. She was previously Vice President Employee Engagement at NISource and has had 25 years of experience with NISource, which is a natural gas transmission storage and distribution electric generation and distribution company. Um, I've had the pleasure of meeting Jen and also working with uh, members of her staff through the um, newly formed Ohio Energy Workforce Consortium. Um, Becky Bruner is also here with us today who sits on that, uh, the steering committee for that. Um, Duke Energy, AEP, and some other utility companies have really been drivers in forming that consortium, recognizing that even though today there is a uh, hiring freeze in many companies or a shortage of openings, they're facing, similar to many of our skilled trades, a looming workforce shortage due to an aging workforce. 